Hey everyone, Azure Static Web Apps recently released a bunch of features that are useful for deploying your app with Azure DevOps. Today, we'll walk through how to create a pipeline that builds your app and deploys it to multiple environments in static web apps. We'll also look at how to require approvals before deploying to an environment, run automated end-to-end -end tests using the Playwright framework, and secure your staging environments with a password. Here, I have a .NET app in my Azure DevOps repository. In the Client folder, I have a Blazor WebAssembly front end. In the API folder, I have a .NET 6 Azure Functions API. And in the Playwright Tests folder, I have some end-to-end -end tests that use the Playwright framework to validate that my app is working as expected. To deploy this app to Azure Static Web Apps, I'll go to the Azure portal and create a static web app. I'll create a resource group and provide a name. Since I'm building a production app, I'm going to choose the standard plan. But most of the things we'll see today also work with the free plan. Azure Static Web Apps globally distributes my app's static content. I still have to select a region here where my Azure Functions API and staging environments will be deployed. My app is in Azure DevOps, so I'll select that. And I'll look for my DevOps project and select the branch I want to use. Finally, I'll select a build preset. This is a Blazor app. It all looks good, and I'll go ahead and create the app. And it only takes a few seconds for the app to be created. And if I go back to my Azure DevOps repo and refresh, I'll see there's a new pipeline that was added. The pipeline has a single task. It's the Azure Static Web Apps task that automatically builds and deploys your app. If I open my new pipeline, I can see a build that's running. It took a few minutes to build and deploy my app. Now back in the Azure portal, I can click on my app's URL and see that it's working. If I click on fetch data, it's calling the Azure Functions API and getting back some random weather data. The pipeline that was generated by Azure Static Web Apps has a single stage. For many apps, this works great, but sometimes we want to build a more robust pipeline that deploys to multiple environments. And maybe we want to run automated tests or require approvals before deploying. We can do that by adding environments in Azure DevOps and then modifying the pipeline file. The first thing I'll do is go to my pipelines environments and create one called staging. Then I'll create one called production. For the production environment, I'll require an approval from me before deploying. I've cloned my repo down to my machine and opened it with VS Code. Here's my pipeline file again. I'll replace the single stage pipeline with the much fancier one that has multiple stages. I have three stages in this new pipeline. The first one is called build. It installs a .NET SDK. Then it builds the Blazor front end, the Azure Functions API, and the Playwright test project. It publishes those as artifacts that will be consumed by the remaining stages. The key here is I'm building the app once, and I'm deploying the same artifacts to all my environments. This way, I'm sure that my app that I tested in staging is the same one that I'm deploying to production. The next stage is deploy to staging. I added an environment property that references the staging environment that I just created in Azure DevOps. This job first downloads the artifacts from the build stage. Then it uses the Azure Static Web Apps task to deploy them to the staging environment. I'm setting both the skip app build and skip API build flags to true, so it deploys what was built in the first stage without building it again. If I use skip API build, Azure Static Web Apps doesn't know what runtime my API uses. So I'll tell it by modifying my app's configuration file to point to the correct runtime. This file is in the front end app's triple W root folder. Azure Static Web Apps recently added the ability to deploy to named environments. Named environments are great for previewing changes to your app in different stages of your pipeline. Here in the pipeline file, I'm calling this environment staging to match the environment I created in Azure DevOps. If I don't specify it, the task will deploy the app to production. After my app is deployed to the staging environment, I want to run my automated Playwright tests on it. Playwright is an end-to-end -end test framework that uses a variety of browsers to test our app. It saves us from manually testing our app every time we make a change. 
To run the tests in the Azure DevOps agent, I first need to install .NET. Then I'll use these commands here to install the necessary browsers and dependencies. Then I'll use the .NET test command to run the tests. We'll look at what the tests look like later on in the video. The last stage is deploy to production. It looks just like the staging stage. I'm referencing the production environment that I just created. This will cause the pipeline to wait for my approval before running this job. I didn't set the deployment environment property in the Azure Static Web Apps task, so it's going to deploy to production. Now I'm going to save the pipeline. Then I'll commit it to Git and push it. In Azure DevOps, I can see that the pipeline is running and it now has three stages. After a couple of minutes, the first stage is done. When the pipeline uses the Azure DevOps environments for the first time, it will ask me for permission. I only have to permit it once and I won't be asked again. This is different than the manual approval I added for the production environment. While the app is deploying to staging, let's look at the artifacts that were created by the build stage. And now the second stage is done. Before we move on to the production stage, I'll open up the Azure portal and see that a staging environment has been created in my static web app. If I click on it, I can see that it's deployed to a staging URL. I can use it to preview my changes, and the playwright tests are going to be run against this environment as well. Here are my tests back in VS Code. It references a variable that contains my app's URL. This is set by the Azure Static Web Apps task after it finishes deploying to an environment. When the tests run in the pipeline, it's going to use this variable to figure out which environment to call. And in this case, it's going to talk to the staging environment to validate that it is working as expected. Here are a couple of tests. The first is a simple one that checks that the home page works. The next one clicks through the app to ensure that the weather data is being retrieved from the API and displayed on the page. Back in my pipeline run, I can click on the tests and see a report. Everything passed. Just like my staging environment, I also have to permit the pipeline to use the production environment. And again, I only have to do this once. Then I see a different approval. This is the one that I defined for my production environment. I'll need to manually approve it every time before the production stage will run. And a couple more minutes later, the third stage is done as well, and my app is fully deployed. If I refresh the environments page, I can see the deployment status here as well. Before we wrap up the video, I want to show you one more thing. If I go to my staging site, I can see that it's actually open to the public. Most of the time, I want to restrict access to my staging sites to only my team. Azure Static Web Apps recently added the ability to protect my app with a password. I can enable it in the configuration page in the portal. I'll select Protect Staging Environments Only. Then I'll set a password and confirm it, and then click Save. Now if I refresh the staging site, it asks for a password. I'll enter it, and the site loads. But what about the Playwright tests? Are they now broken because I've added a password to my site? Taking a look at the tests again in VS Code, you can see I added some logic to log into the staging site. It gets the password from a variable named login password. So let's set that up. In my pipeline, I can add an environment variable. I'll name it login password. I'll make it a secret and then I'll fill in the correct value. Because it's a secret, I'll also need to explicitly pass it to my Playwright tests. I'll also make a small change to my app. Then I'll commit the changes and push them. My pipeline is now going to run again. It took a few minutes to build the app, deploy it to staging, and run the tests. Now it's asking for my approval. I'll take a look at the staging site and to do that, I need to log in to see it. I can see the change I made is here, and it all looks great. I'm going to go ahead and approve the pipeline, 
and it'll deploy to production. And it's done. So to recap, we saw how to create a multi-stage pipeline in Azure DevOps to deploy to different Azure Static Web Apps environments. We also set up approvals, we ran tests, and we secured our staging environments. Now go ahead and try this yourself, and thanks so much for watching.